Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. And today I have a challenge. Ben Riach, 21 old, 2017, versus Ben Riach, new, 2020, 2021. Also 21 years old. Boom, 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 boom. Now I have no idea what your prices are. I can only say that I actually paid a little bit less for this than I did for this, which is actually unusual. This should be about 118 euros. This should be about 108 euros. I actually paid 118 euros for this and about 119 for this because I got this on sale on, on sale over there in neither in the Netherlands. So um, I'm going to first of all describe the packaging. So here we have a nice little tube. Here have, we have the 21. Both of these are from um, Rachel Berry, by the way. All right, so she still used the, with the the and the Ben and the capital R here that Billy Walker did, but her um, signature is on this. So this is her bottle. She put this together on the back. We have a big old 21 and so on. We have a blue color, a little bit of a faded navy blue is what I'm going to call this. Over here, we have a much um, vibrant, a darker rum, blue color, and we have a box. And here we have the age, uh, the age of the distillery, founded 1898. The 21 year old space side malt Scotch whiskey, forecast matured, an exquisite single malt with layers of elegant, um, and then 21 and so on. So what we have down here is the Benariach Distillery. They have a new logo. I don't know if I've ever seen this before with the B and the D in there. Um, but that was something they did. Um, very nice here. An old man like me with my 50 plus years of age can actually read this. It's a font size that is actually um, still readable without glasses. And what I always love is now moment, the moment they have a little sticker they always put on there, depending on the country they send it to. Over here, it's getting kind of tiny. Um, you can see how much tinier it is. You do have a nice little um, the tube and uh, you have the barcode on there and all that. So I'm going to pull up the bottles now and take a look at the differences. This is the standard Ben Riach that we know and we love. Uh, the, the 15 or the 12 or anything else, the 10 looks exactly like the same. You have the little strip up here. You have the main label here. You have the label in the back. Um, you have the nice little picture here in front of the distillery with the barrels and so on. But this is a product from Brown Foreman. This is here, and you have natural color, non-chilled filtered, very, very good at the top. You have forecast maturation. Interesting enough, um, you can find out that this was actually um, bourbon cask, virgin oak cask, Pedro Jimenez, and then red wine. This, on the other hand, says it's um, bourbon cast of virgin oak sherry. So the Pedro Jimenez has turned into sherry. And the red wine here has turned into Bordeaux. Oh. So they got more specific with the wine and they got less specific with the type of sherry. So also here I'm going to pull out the bottle. So you have the nice little presentation. It's a little silky in here, a little bit velvet. Uh, also you have a nice little thing that you can actually put the bottle in and it stays put. And you have the bottle here. Now the bottle is actually a tiny bit shorter than the old bottle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour a little bit into the glass here. Finally, I'm going to point out some other things back then. So on the bottle here, you have something called 1898, um, which was very important apparently to Billy Walker. The age on this bottle over here, you have only in the back in a very gray and white situation here, 1898. Um, what you do have in the bottle now is the new logo, the B and the D here. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that's as important as the age um, of the distillery, but who knows. Now, the second thing that I really recognized immediately was the cork. So what I do here is I'm going to take a look at the two corks. I'm going to put this one and this one. It just wiggles around. I'm going to try to put this in here. It's much too big. So what they did is they changed the opening of the, barrel, of the bottle. This bottle is shorter, by the way. And what we have here is maybe a better opening. So you can actually pour better and maybe glucks a little bit better. I don't know. Um, the glass bottom actually feels much thicker on this bottle than it does on this bottle. Um, you have very, very little glass bottom. So this bottle is actually a little bit stout, a little bit pushed together. And it has a little bit of a higher quality, at least according to my opinion. So I actually like the bottle. I did not like the, the, the gold label at the bottom. That was a little bit difficult for me um, to read. 
but I do like this. So this was actually on the label here. You can see this was um, bottled on the 4th of November, 2020. This on the label says it was bottled in September of 2017. Can I find this exactly? This was on the... Um, Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, this was a 2019 bottle. This was actually bottled on the 2nd of um, November 2019. So not that, just about, about a year apart. Now, the problem that I have here is I'm smelling something very definitely different than I was expecting. I'm smelling smoke. Now, if you read, which I did not do before I bought this, an ex exquisite single malt with layers of elegant honeyed smoke matured in an intriguing selection of oak. And if you look at the, bod, at the back of the, bod, um, the, the case, which you can actually read here, it says, candied grapes, rich cocoa, smoked pine nut, finished with caramelized pear and honey smoke. So they actually do use the word twice smoke, which I was not expecting because the Ben Riach over here has zero smoke. N zero, nil, nothing, absolutely nada, nyet, nyet. And yet, the new one does. And that really, really blew my mind. Imagine you're a big, big fan of Ben Riach 21. You've been now drinking it for maybe a few years, and you want to replace your bottle, and you go to the liquor store, and you say, okay, no problem. Okay, new design, new box, good, go buy it, boom, come home and open it up and go, that's not Ben Riach 21. That's something totally different. It's, it almost smells like something from Ben Romach. And this was going to be a big problem for many, many people. Because at least I, and I'm fairly well integrated in the whiskey scene, have heard nil, nothing, absolute nyada, net, net, about anything about the changing of the recipe here. I bought and did this um, um, comparison just because my fans said, hey, look, Jason, in the, in the Netherlands, it's a price you won't ever get again. You haven't done it, try it. I was like, hey, good idea. I'm going to go buy the old one just to see if there might be a little bit of a slight sl flavor drift. I was not expecting a totally different monster. And that's what this is. This is a totally different monster. All right, so going to the Ben Riach 21. I like Ben Riach, actually. Many, many b bottles of Ben Riach I really like. I had one or two um, peated or tore, uh, uh, um, peated or smoked whiskeys from Ben Riach, which I did not like. I'm not aware. I guess I could ask my my, my book here. Um, but when did um, Ben Riach used to have their own malting facilities? Um, 21 years ago. That's a long time ago, actually. Did they actually still do floor uh, malt malt floor um, maltings there? It says here in my book, 1998. The malting is decommissioned. So that would be actually, um, yeah, right around the time where this was distilled. And so who knows? Um, 21 years old means there has to be at least 21 years old. If there's something 23 or 25, um, it's still a 21-year-old as soon as you put something that is 21 into the mix. So you could have four, like, four different casks, and you could have something at 30 years old, something at 28 years old, something at 25 years old, and something at 21 years old. And the 21-year-old de defines the age of the entire whiskey here. All right, good, good, good. Going here on the nose. Ah, a fresh summer day. Flower, a little bit of a, um, of a um, fruitiness. Um, a little bit of red fruit. Almost a strawberry orchard, a strawberry field. Ah, oh, sweetness. Very, very nice. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have a few translations of that. What really surprises me is the amount of ginger, the amount of alcohol sharpness I'm getting. This is 21-year-old stuff. This should be smooth as a baby's butt and it's not there's some heat in there and it's not the 46 percent it's the the used old casts that were very inactive that are actually used to blend this together rachel berry came in basically 2017 after um brown foreman bought the distillery here from um, um billy walker she was suddenly responsible for glenn glassow she was suddenly responsible for glenn dronach and also ben riach Ben Riach is basically the first one they've actually rebranded and redid, which is very, very nice. By the way, Glendronach will be rebranded. 
Mm -hmm. So watch out. Um, after rebranding, things are usually more expensive, mm -hmm. even though Glen Ronach is expensive now. So we'll have to see. I, I like the rebranding of um, the 12 and the 10 year old. Um, I'm not really sure if I like the rebranding of the 21 year old. I'm not a big fan of the old brand of the 21 year old either. So um, <laughs> they didn't screw it up. They just didn't do it as, as good as they could have, my personal opinion. Um, this is a good whiskey. This is a C++ B minus minus whiskey. It doesn't blow you away though. Um, 100 euros would be the maximum I'd want to pay for this whiskey. As I said, I paid about 118 for this. The normal price over here is 138, so you're actually going up in price. It's going to bump up, of course, um, because whiskey is just getting a little bit more expensive. Um, yeah, not bad, not bad, nice. Now, going over here to the new whiskey, um, the first thing I get is I'm actually in a smokehouse. I have smoked bacon, I have smoked ham, I have smoked salami. And behind that smoke, and it's very difficult for me to actually get anything behind the smoke, um, is a little bit of a, of a berry type of sherry type of raspberry moment. Uh, just alone, um, judging this whiskey by the nose, I would give it actually a D. This is not something I want. Me. Other people love smoky type of smoky bacon in their whiskey, smoked ham in the whiskey. I don't. I'm not a big fan of that. That's not something I want. That's not something I buy. That's not something I look for. Other people do, but I don't. I'm not a peat head. And so if you change something from something that's zero peat to something with peat, please inform me more than enough so I'm warned before that happens. All right, and I do think that Ben Riach has done basically nothing, at least in my German world that I live in, and also the whiskey world that I live in, and I watch a lot of different things, and I read a lot of different things also on the um, on different press releases and different things. I, they've done, nothing has reached me to inform me that the new Ben Riach 21 is PT. Sorry, that would have been, that would have been an important measure there, yeah? Imagine um, you had something that was never peated, and then suddenly it became peated. Something you'd like to know before you buy, at least me. All right. So the nose just doesn't do it for me. All right, cheers. Mm. 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 <laughs> that surprised me. This whiskey goes through a story. The first story is the time it had in the um, bourbon and virgin oak casks. And then it transitions into a, as a wonderful red wine and sherry actually mix well. I've had a few cuvées where I was like, wow. And this is actually wow. And then actually what happens is after that um, sherry, red cuvée, red wine, Bordeaux, a moment happens, you add a tiny little bit of um, smokiness to it. And the smokiness actually carries on into something that is eloquent. This is nice. And this, the nose doesn't reveal that journey at all. I did not want to like this whiskey, and yet I do. Um, this was something that totally took me by surprise. Um, I am not, as I said, a peat head. I am not someone who likes, especially the smoky bacon moment of a whiskey. I'm more of maybe the um, bonfire ash if I would have to pick something. Um, I, I'm definitely not the man who likes the, the, the smoky bacon. But this works fabulously. This works better than I thought it was. I'm going to give this whiskey actually a B minus. Now the value for money, 138 euros, is exactly there where we should be at the moment for a 21 year old single malt scotch from, from Scotland. Um, Glen Fackless over here in my world, um, the 21 year old, you can still get on sale for 99 euros. And that's about it. Everything else is above 100 euros. And this being at 140 euros is not a surprise. Um, this being at maybe 100 to 118 euros is actually a deal at the moment. So if you find anything on sale, go find it, go buy it, um, enjoy it. And if you want to try something new with that smokiness and you're, you're aware of the 
of the smokiness, then go for the 21. Um, it's an actually a very well made whiskey. The transitions are more than eloquent. Um, it's very, very well constructed and it's surprisingly good. Okay, with a little bit of water, that um, that bacon moment, that smoky bacon is a little bit suppressed. I'm getting a little bit more of a sweet red nose type of moment. Mm -hmm. With water, I didn't get exactly the transitions, exactly the journey that I had otherwise. Um, value for money, I'm actually going to give this a C-. minus. Um, if you can find it and you want it, go for it. I know it's expensive, but hey, and that's my question of the day is what type of 21-year-old whiskeys do you enjoy? Now, of course, you can say Glendronach. Now, Glendronach used to be one of those staples of every good bar in America and, and also in Europe. The 18-year-old, the 20-year, 21-year-old, you can get them for 60 or 80 euros, respectively. They were well underpriced, people. They had nothing to do with the reality of the whiskey world that we now live in. I'm sorry. <laughs> Everyone's moaning and crying about the good old days where you could pick up an 18-year-old Glendronach for under 60 euros. Never going to happen again. Find something else. Sorry. Um, what is your favorite 21-year-old Scotch whiskey? Um, take a look at Ockentosh and 21-year-old. It's more expensive than a Ben Riach. Take a look at the 21-year-old, um, even the 21-year-old Glendronach is about the same price at the moment. And wait until after the redesign. It's going to be actually even more. Um, take a look at anything. Take a look at Springberry, 21-year-old. <laughs> I, I think I paid like three, 400 euros for a bottle of that. It's just unbelievable what the prices are for 21-year-old whiskey at the moment. Expensive, expensive, expensive. What would I rather drink? I actually would rather drink the 21-year-old Ben Riach, old, um, because I have to be in the mood for a peated whiskey. For a peated whiskey, this is very well made, but I have to be actually willing and wanting to do that. All right. Thank you very much for watching. As I said, what is your favorite 21-year-old um, single malt scotch whiskey? Write it in the comment and maybe even write a price tag behind it. Thank you very much for watching. Like, subscribe, tell others. Please tell others. And also maybe share this video on social media wherever you want to because I think there have not been many, if anyone has actually compared the old Ben Riach 21 to the new. So, hey, use this opportunity to help others also to avoid maybe a bad purchase especially if they can't try it in the store and they cannot tell that this has been smoked. <laughs> All the best. Whiskey Jason here. Thank you very much for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.